Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Odur Jigero. I am the lead at Money Monkey and Money Monkey is a platform that talks about wealth, that talks about uh, every industry that is making money and trying to do business. And today we are going to be talking about uh, digital platforms and my guest is going to say that it's called, actually called Digital Natives. That is, um, uh, th that is, that is uh, publications that are majorly online and uh, so I have a lot to say and I have a lot of opinion about about digital platforms you know and today we are going to be talking with the managing director of Tuko it's just tuko.co.ke or it's just Tuko Tuko Media Tuko Media yeah and um Tuko Media I, I don't have I don't have the I don't have the I don't have the I don't have the statistics and probably you will tell us, probably you'll refuse to tell us what is going on there. But I know that Tuko has overtaken a lot of, uh, you know, digital uh, media platforms in this country. And um, I think that most of the traditional media were thinking that we are not going to arrive at this crossroad where digital natives or digital, or, or, or digital platforms have become very serious competition to them. Okay, so these days when I look at uh, the nation, I look at the standard, I look at business daily, I'm like, I'm just going to say that <laughs> when, did the, <laughs> when did the rain start beating them? Please be kind. I am, I am, I am really, really kind. But you see, there is, there is some arrogance that, that, that a certain telco used to have in this country mm -hmm. about how they charge for data, how they charge for calling rates. And then mm -hmm. Safaricom came. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, even banks were very arrogant mm -hmm. when M-Pesa was being introduced, and no. then and then and then right now they are all using M-Pesa. You see, so Tuko mm -hmm. Media mm -hmm. is is living a a trail of dead media houses. You know, <laughs> like which ones? <laughs> <laughs> we are we we all know them. So we are going to discuss digital natives, and we are going to zero in mm -hmm. on the person that is leading one of the leading digital natives, and that is Tuko, uh, Julia Majale. I wanted to call you with that name. Yes, but how thank are you, you doing? I'm very well. It's interesting that uh, you are now the head of. Would you say Tuko is the is the number one uh, digital native? Yeah, that's correct. It's the leading uh, it's the digital leading. media, digital by, by a, platform. By, by a mile or by miles? Uh, miles. Miles. Yeah. <laughs> do we have stats? Um, yeah, we do. General, yeah, general stats. What are the stats? Um, I think I can give you in terms of page views, the number of page views that Tuko gets mm. in a month. Um Range, they range between 27 to 30 million page views. That is on the Google Analytics, if we're using the Google Analytics statistics. That's about 30, 30, 30 million page views per month. Per month, yes. And do you know number two? Where is number two? Uh, I, I will not be I will not be mentioning. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But, who, but, but how many page views is number two? Um, I, I'm not very, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the, the statistics for, like the page views, because it's an internal it's an internal thing, mm. but if I give stats in terms of what but we this, use this, to this, compare, this is this is this is this is this is actually this is actually public. You can actually go to a to a to a competing. Yeah, yeah, and check. Look, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. At the moment, I'm not. I cannot give the exact figures. I don't want to give figures that I'm not. Uh, yeah, but but sure. but uh, it, it's estimated one. Would you would you put it at ten million? Would you put it at fifteen million? I don't. I, w I don't want to be misquoted. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair, yes, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Yes. But when I was when I was young, mm -hmm. I I I I wanted to be a a preacher. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, and then when at some stage I wanted to be uh, a TV personality, mm -hmm. and then and then it changed. I wanted to be a writer. Then you became one. Then I became one, yeah. a writer. And I have never loved being a writer because I cut across all disciplines. I can write for anything under the sun. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, do you remember your childhood, what you wanted to become? First of all, did you grow up in Nairobi? No. 
Mm-hmm. I came to I came to Nairobi in campus um, when I was joining Daystar University. Mm. But I used to visit Nairobi at my uncle's place once in a while growing up. I grew up in Bungoma. Mm-hmm. Bungoma is a very uh, infamous county because of a lot of things yeah. that happened there, which are just, um, I don't say ridiculous, but they're very funny. And I think Bungoma makes news all the time. There are memes. Yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah. Memes about it. It's a very famous the famous capital county. city, the capital, the capital city of memes. <laughs> Yeah, like right now we have uh, we have we have our own Jesus. Anyway, is that, that guy is from Bungoma. Yeah, he's from Bungoma. So I grew up in Bungoma. I I always knew I will. Okay, I, I can't say I always knew, but I had uh, I had a feeling. Yeah. Because growing up, I used to ask a lot of questions. That's something. Even right now, if you ask my husband he'll tell you he gets tired of my questions mm. i always have questions and questions so i was like that when i was young i would ask questions guests would come in the house and i'll have questions for each and every person my mom my dad i was very inquisitive so they they used to joke that i'll either become a broadcaster or a lawyer yeah even right now my uh, hubby usually tells me why don't you just become a lawyer like i always have questions mm. so because of that i had the sort of an inkling i'll go towards this profession that asks questions over and over. And then I I used to, uh, there's a joke my dad always tells to my family or during Christmas holidays, how I used to read the, pe- the newspaper upside down. And I will say, uh, for those who understand Swahili, nyamazeni uh, naskia matangazo, I will say matangajo. This is ridiculous. So I was very interested in news for some reason, I don't know why. But also, I also learned my dad... Uh, made me re- start reading very early. Like, I, he would give me books, novels, way early. And then he would follow up, like, have you, have you finished? What have you read? What have you... Mm-hmm. So there was that... So to, it's like I was being guided towards a certain path. Not... Um, it was not very deliberate, but I sort of went there. Mm. Yeah, that was my that was my childhood. And then and then so you went to you went to a good school. You went to a school that you're not proud of. I went to I went to a school, <laughs> my primary school. I'm not proud of my primary school. I'm proud of it in the sense that I'm proud of it. But it was it was not it was. Okay, not that's that's very direct. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it, it, there is nothing to there is nothing to remember about it. Okay, that bad. Well, I went for yeah. me. I went to a very good school. It's actually still one of the leading. Uh, private schools in Bungoma. It's called yeah. Mariel Academy. It's 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 interesting that 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 most of the times when you when you get your education right, you're going to get life right. Is it is it really true? Because uh, I was born in the village. I am not sure if I've accomplished anything. <laughs> I don't, you know. <laughs> but but people went to good schools uh, end up. They seem to have accomplished places. something. Yeah. Okay. I I know my dad was really deliberate about good schools so i did go to a very to a good school at that time it was a public school even right now i think it's called right now it's called marel group of schools it's in bungoma so i was school there uh first the first years of primary then i moved to another private school it was called gateway again that went well and then my high school um yeah i went to a high school in mumias yeah. a girls high school right now it's called saint mary's uh in mumias mm. And then, then now I went to Daystar University. The high school, how was it? Was it where did you, what did you guys learn there? Was this one of those you know boarding schools where people are crammed in <laughs> in a hall? And it was a Catholic boarding school. That's all I remember. Catholic boarding schools are not very bad. Yeah, but it's a, it was actually nice. All I yeah. remember we used to eat. Uh, we used to eat chicken, which is not very normal to other schools. You you eat you eat chicken. Yeah, I ate, and omena, eggs. I ate omena throughout my high school. Oh yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> was it cooked well? I'm curious. No, the, I don't know. It was. I am cooking. I was cooking it by myself. I I never because my father was my father wasn't able to afford boarding school. Oh, I, I was boarding, wondering. Yeah, so, which boarding school? So w- what he did to me was that he he actually it was actually a boarding school and a day school. So oh. what he did was that uh, he went and hired uh, and and rented a room mm-hmm. close to school, For and then to, gave me and gave me lots and lots of omena to go and cook. So I I remember I probably ate omena just the entire time. Do you time. still eat omena right now? Yes, I do. I wouldn't. 
it, it's 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 lovely. Omena, Omena, it's difficult to divorce yourself from Omena. I know, I love it, but I'm just I'm just thinking if you eat yeah, it so much. I think you're saying that because of people who eat cabbages in school and they're no longer eating cabbages. Or gideri. Or gideri. Yes. But I do, for me I do. It took took me a minute. Then you came to Daystar. What yeah. did you learn in Daystar? In Daystar, I think Daystar was fun. And yeah. fun in the sense that first year I was very green. I was a day scholar actually my entire And you were a villager. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why you not? I don't know. I don't know how to put that. But my my first my first year was very um I was fi- you're figuring things out, you know, yeah. a freshman. Mm. And I used to go home every day. I didn't live in school, so I didn't I didn't get to have that life of of people living freshers, living in school, which was nice. So that means I was very um What's the word? The one, the one next to the next upper, upper in no, 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 the no, other, the no. other river, one. The other one in a river. Yeah, at river. But I used to, used to live in in South Sea at that time. South Sea. Yeah. So I will come home every day. Yeah. Yeah. So that was first year. Second year, um, I don't know if it was something I attended or it was an advice by someone I can't remember, but I was advised to just be very, uh, to engage in extra curri- extracurricular mm. yes, activities. Yeah. So of course I'm in a media school. There's a radio station. We have a newspaper. I started. Um, I I decided to apply, and it was very formal, by the way. You apply, you go through interviews, and then you. Yeah, go. I remember that you had to be saved. Did you lie that you're saved? <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking about religion in this? <laughs> no, but that was the, that was. I remember. Oh, that was a, that was just a lie. People were no, not people not being asked if you were saved. No. Okay, that was during the application. And yeah. f- for joining the school, how, at, exact, at, how, how exactly were they asking this question? I'm very interested. It was a whole. You'll write like a whole test. Okay, not test testimony. Testimony. Yes, yeah. when you are applying, yeah, like written everything, and then you apply, then they'll decide. Of course, uh, we didn't have those interviews like one on one. But at this point, I'm talking about the interviews for you to work like in the radio station. So we, I, I did apply. I went in for interviews. Uh, I think they, they used to pick students who are like in their second year, people who've done at least the introduction to mass communication at that time. Yeah. So I got in the radio. I used to, I had two shows. One countdown show on Saturday, which was very interesting. Three hours. I loved it on Saturdays. And then I had another show. It was an arts show every Tuesday morning. So this sort of diversified how I thought in terms of um, work and school. So I was very busy. And then I joined the university publication as a photographer. I was the girl with dreadlocks who always has a camera in her hand anywhere yeah. during events. Mm. Everyone would stop me to take their photos and they'll come to me for them to give them later. Yeah, so I will write photography. I'm in radio. And then at some t- point I did news for a Swa- for the Swahili sports news, <laughs> which was again very... I didn't know I was good at Swahili. I don't think I was, but... So that was me being busy. And then I joined, uh, at some point, I met someone who introduced me to an editor at Capitol, Capitol FM. And they used they wanted students to write for them um, news, things that are happening in campus. So there was a section called Capital Campus. So I used to send in my stories and they were published. If you're in campus, that's a, very, that's a big deal. Yeah. So yeah, my, camp- my campus life was very busy. The last two... Two, two years, two it's years. It's interesting, interesting that uh, in the digital agency, when you get people from college, they're very much half-baked. And mm-hmm. uh, they, what what you see is it's, it's like they were not interested. There is a lady who told me mm. when she came for internship that the course that I've actually done, I did it for my father. And I'm figuring out what I want to do for myself. And why was she doing the internship? To finish the course? Yeah, it's a requirement. Oh, okay. So I think... Um, for me, my, my experience was different in terms of this is what I wanted to do. So it's it has to do a lot with you as a person. Like it's, it has to be, in, you have to be intentional about it. It's a personal initiative. For me, that was personal. And I also feel like I had so much time in campus. Like I had all this, you know, in campus, you're, you're too, you're either, people are going for a party, you're going for a meeting somewhere or, you know. But for me, I had all the time. So I used mm. that time too. And I still can't remember who advised me to do that, but for some reason, I followed that. I didn't know where it was going to lead me. For maybe, me, I was maybe, just maybe you just you just you just intentional about your future. 
I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know at that time. But I think for now, if and I've advised this to my siblings, my my brother right now is at multimedia doing it's the same course communication and I've advised him. Use take all the chances, use all the yeah. opportunities to grow because you're going to build yourself. It will help you when you're out there looking for a job. And and, and and I think I think that is that is that is what what is very important to yeah. I remember when I was at that shitty school that I went to Nairobi Aviation <laughs> School. Uh we Does it still exist? <laughs> Well, man, I I you really don't, don't I really don't know. I don't follow so much about because the principal uh-huh. and the owner became another Ezekiel, and things just went awry. Uh-huh. They started cheating in exams and a lot of a lot of stories. But anyway, uh-huh. uh, they when gave me the, they gave me the no uh-huh. after I left. Uh-huh. The stories that came were after I, after, oh, yeah, after yeah. I left. So, uh, anyways, um, I don't want to. I want. I don't want to. I don't want to say anything about that. <laughs> yeah, you like were saying I, while you were there, what happened? Yeah, well, I, well, I was. Well, I was there. I was. I was a cameraman too. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't. I wasn't like you. You were a bit. A, a bit privileged. You're just taking photos for, for, for the <laughs> sake. I was selling photos. That is oh, that is yeah. how I was that is how I was surviving. It's, oh yeah, yeah, it was I, for survival. Yeah, I was taking photos and and selling them, and that's how I would get uh, the pocket money I, I I was getting. And my college was mm-hmm. I don't rem- college was very tough for me, you know. But I enjoyed it. One mm-hmm. of the things that I remember doing in college is that uh, uh, Motano and myself mm-hmm. we went to the ministry of uh, of I don't think I don't know what was used to be called mm-hmm. information and technology. I think at that time, mm-hmm. and we asked for a press, a press card. Wow! Yeah. And the guy, and the lady, the little lady there, refused to give me uh, a press card and said, "This is only given to journalists." To, to journalists, and we said, and we went outside with Mutano and then went back, and told the lady that you know what, we have to have this press card, and she was like, "For what reason?" And mm-hmm. we told her that. You know, we were we have been invited to the UN, and they don't allow anybody without a press card. card, Yeah, and so you know, we were two little boys, and this was a little lady, and she just looked at us and said, "All right, Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the press cards," and she gave us the press cards. Mm -hmm. And so what we were doing because Motano and myself were coming from from a poor background, and we were just we were just scavengers in the city. You know, no lunch money, no nothing. So what? We would do with the press card, which was extremely powerful, mm-hmm. Julia. I know. So uh, press card is powerful. Yeah, yeah and especially is. given by the government of Kenya, yes. it was very, very powerful. So we used to actually go to these five star hotels. So mm-hmm. Motano, Motano had a friend <laughs> at the news agency, Nairobi office, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he went and told the guy that I want you to put me in the list of in the, journalists. Of journalists. Yeah, yeah. The email. So Motano would, would get all the email yes. advi- uh, invites. So you will attend press conferences. We would attend press conferences. We would attend luncheons. We would, we would just say that we are journalists. And, and you know, I don't know. Okay, that, is, that is good exposure. <laughs> Trickery, is, I, I remember there is a time we, we had a breakfast meeting at the Intercontinental. Mm-hmm. We had a press conference with Garang. At the at the at the, the the Libyan hotel, it used to be called Laiko mm-hmm. Regency. Laiko Regency, yeah. Okay, and then we had a we had a lunch, a luncheon for journalists mm-hmm. at Serena. The same day, we had a cocktail party at Sarova. In the evening, I'm telling you. Wait. And so you, you what would you what did you used to say? You're a journalist from. Oh, they will look at your press conference and they won't ask you because it was, oh, it was hard. The government. No, no, I know. But when you are interacting, when you are networking. Oh, well, oh you, Motano was a good liar. <laughs> yeah, you had to. You had to be. You would say anything. Motano could even say it from the BBC. I mean, <laughs> wow. it was it was great. Mm-hmm. So that is that is that is that is that is that is how we got this exposure and knowing mm-hmm. journalists and writing and things like that. Um, so. Uh, you finished college mm-hmm. and then uh, you went to so i finished um day i think it was i hadn't finished actually i was like on my last year because also going through school wasn't very easy for me there was a few financial challenges here and there but i think during my last year and i remember this very clearly i used to w- do have uh, i used to take part in work study programs work study programs is where you work for the school and then part of the tuition 
part of uh, they they reduce part of the tuition like the money you earn goes to your tuition so i think i used to earn like 40k every month but you don't you don't get to have the cash it goes to the tuition like to to reduce from the from, from, yeah? from, from school oh from yeah? school yeah so i used to work at um a, a, lab, a lab like a computer lab but for specifically for uh, communication students so i will help students with they want to print something they want to write something the computer has an issue you know the usual computer lab things yeah so i remember i was that day was working at, at, at a night shift because students come in sometimes at night and a student came in and said um who is looking for internship uh my lecturer at that time and she's very good she's called rosemary kowar she's still there uh she said rosemary kowar is um looking for anyone who wants to be an intern i think they had like a partnership with uh nation media at that time in standard so they would pick s- students from the staff for internship a paper was passed around i wrote my name and they moved on with life next thing i'm uh uh the, the lecturer calls and requests now for me to send a CV and application and I send and she says it's okay. And then I was called for an interview. Actually I was called for an interview at Nation and Standard. But I, the Standard one came first. So I went I and it was very rigorous. I don't I am I still at that time of course I didn't understand. Right now I understand why you have to go through that rigorous process to get somebody who's good even if it's an intern. Yeah. Yeah, so it was very rigorous. I think we did we did several tests, writing, I think there was another I can't remember which which other one. And then I passed. I joined Standard and it was a big, you know, at that time as a student you're just like this is like the dream working for this big media house on Mombasa Road. Yeah. And then I joined Standard and I joined the digital desk. So for me it's like my career was just it was head, heading towards one. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't go to print or TV. I was I was put on the digital desk. Yeah, and that's where I took off. So the digital desk at that time we used to get stories from uh print, PDF, put them on the web, upload on the website, make sure the website is updated, uh posting stories on Facebook, on Twitter, live tweeting news, sending out um what are they called? SMS alerts, news alerts, yeah. So you know as an intern you get in, you grow, you start working on it on uh, international stories, you write here once in a while. Again with the same mentality of doing everything. <laughs> I I went in and I started writing for the trending section of the newspaper. At that time Standard had a section of what's trend. It's called it was called what's trending. Yeah, so I would pick what's trending like tweets, stuff like that. And then I got even even got a byline. So I started writing. Once in a while I would send an editor a story. It's published and I'm still on a digital uh, desk. I was there for six months. I left. I got called back I think after like few months again. Now I was given a contract as an employee not pnp but yeah as on contract basis yeah still the same I was there for two years and then took okay mean now mm. yeah and so and so that 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 gives us the transition to tuko uh <coughs> tuko is you call it you call it you call it you call it before we started this interview uh, a digital, digital native. native yeah that means that uh, a publication or a digital platform that is that is that is exclusively online and 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 this is this is this is the business that uh is really really booming mm-hmm. right now and i love it mm-hmm. i enjoy it i learn a lot from it you know i have my own that is starting which is not which is far 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 behind tuko and the rest of them mm-hmm. and but it's really really interesting the psychology of uh what what so where you worked the standard what what the traditional media yeah do not do not seem to understand mm-hmm. uh i was during actually during your party when you are when you're graduating after your graduation yeah you went to your party and i was talking to one of the ladies that is working with the with the big with the with the big mm-hmm. three mm-hmm. or the big two mm-hmm. and uh, she was telling me that they are really sc- scrambling mm-hmm. to catch up yeah and to be like like kenyans.co.ke tuko.co.ke mm-hmm. mpasho and mm-hmm. all these other guys i see i see the the the, the other one called the, the nairobi the nairobi, mm-hmm. the nairobi, nairobi news the nairobi, yes nairobi news, yeah. nairobi news they are really there is something that they are doing that the traditional media mm-hmm. doesn't seem to understand mm-hmm. or they are they, they are lacking in understanding when i had a meeting with uh, with brian munen of kibanda pictures yeah he he we talked at length about 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 
the mindset of the traditional media mm-hmm. in terms of content creation. Mm-hmm. And in in his estimation that the the traditional media think that they are the product and then content mm-hmm. is is something that you can only bring to them to have a look at, reject or 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 you know, throw under uh, That is for for videos. I'm for guessing. videos, like yes. That. So for T V series and things like that. And I see the same trend about how they handle news. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's uh, digital, digital, digital native is a very competitive field because you are not just competing. I believe against against nation. You are competing no, against no, we Buzzfeed. Don't. Yeah, we you don't. are con- competing against Buzzfeed. You are mm-hmm. competing against BBC. You are competing against. I mean, people are in a global platform, and everybody is trying to, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like there is there is something that that this new media mm-hmm. is knows that these other guys. There is uh, the lady not told me that that the traditional media is being is is being looked after by by old people mm-hmm. that do not understand what it means to be on Instagram and how Instagram drives stories, yeah, yeah. how TikTok, TikTok drives, drives stories, stories, you know, exactly. things like that. Yeah. What is what is what 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 would you say? What what are some of the things that digital media is not getting right? Uh, sorry, traditional media. Yes, yeah. yes, traditional media. Well, I think I can start from... If anything, traditional media actually are the ones who... They saw this coming a mile away. As I said, when I joined Standard as an intern, it was in 20, 2012 or 2013, I joined on the digital desk. That means they had it there. Maybe they just hadn't figured it out. Maybe they didn't have like an Tuko, R&D. Tuko, Tuko would come in how many years later? Two years later. No, actually, a year later. Yeah, no. two years. Two years later. Two years later. Yeah, because I joined Tuko when it was a year old, a year old, older. Yeah, but you see, they it was already there. At that time, Standard was the number one leading news website. That's how we used to promote. It was a big deal. Even Nation hadn't caught up. None of these other traditional media houses hadn't caught up. But the thing, the thing is, you know, these companies have been in existence for such a long time. I think a mm. hundred years. Some are like seventy. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's. It's been a minute. And to change mindsets, if if anyone, I'm sure you know this, change is very hard. Yeah. It's very painful. It's a process and you have to change everything from within the company, how the people think, even just to show them that this is the direction we're going. You have to do, like, buy, you have to have people who are buying into your idea and it's, yeah, it's such a fight. So for me, I think I'd given... I've given them that doubt, that benefit of the doubt. Like it's not easy. There are people who want to do it, but then they are like decision makers. It's you have to convince them, and you know w- how you're viewing these things from the digital side and how they view things is completely different. Especially people who have companies we ha- which have print, t- TV, radio. Um, for example, right now, I don't know who listens to radio. I don't want to be. <laughs> I don't be very outright, but yeah, it's changing right now. People are going to podcasts. Same thing with movies, um, go TV and and the likes. People right now have smart TVs. No one is no one is paying subscriptions for. Okay, not no one. Some are, but I think the numbers have drastically reduced. Gone down. And it's it's this whole thing of disruption and change. And I think right now it's so big because we have there are a lot of opportunities in terms of innovating. So people are innovating a lot. I'm sure even there's going to be something that's going to be better than Tuko. I can guarantee you. Someone somewhere is thinking about something better than Tuko. So they will catch up, and I think they are going to catch up. They've already started. Again, For, again, when I when I talked with Brian, yeah. Brian was telling me that, look, if Nation wants to make a movie, mm-hmm. they have the capability to make a movie. Yes, if they want to make exactly. a TV series, yeah. they have the vans. They, yeah, 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 they, yeah, yeah. they, they have, they, they have they, the people. They have, they have connect, cameramen. They have conne- yeah, they have cameramen. They have connections with people who can provide meals, people who, are, who can agencies, do special can effects, casting. agencies, and things like that. They have those things, yeah. and that is the that is the that is something that that I also don't understand because mm-hmm. if I am standard mm-hmm. or if I am nation, mm-hmm. if I am KBC, KBC is, needs to be caned, you know. <laughs> KBC is doing so bad, and and and, and yes, they have and, a lot of material. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, you know, why don't do you think they would not just say, okay, we do not understand this thing? 
that's the we do not understand this thing and so what uh-huh, needs uh-huh. to happen is that we need to hire people Julie. who under- we have we need to hire these 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 make a department uh-huh. because my thinking is that they are trying to make they are trying to to have one media house which is not working uh-huh. you know uh-huh. so you you want to claim that you have a digital desk forget about a digital desk forget about a trending desk whatever yeah, i yeah, mean yeah. make a digital department and have them uh, be autonomous and drive things uh-huh. i mean we have julia uh-huh. who is the head of digital uh-huh. And Julia does not answer to the to, print guy. Oh, yeah. I've actually seen some of the media houses are doing that. Like yeah. they they are now they are converged. Like you have somebody who can produce a story for digital. Actually, that's like the rule: produce a story for digital, for print, for yeah. radio. So that's what I'm saying. They are getting there. It's just it's slow and painful, <laughs> but they are getting there it's because of the change. Because of the change, changing changing things is very hard. And also, what I've also learned is, um, like in companies or media or whatever, whatever aspect of, of life, we have a past, we have a present, we have a future. So you get some people who are stuck in the past. Mm. Like, this is how we do things. I'm sure even right now, if someone introduces a change to you, you will be very, you'll be hesitant. Like, yeah. I'm used to doing things this way. Like, I'm used to driving this car. You're being given a, a new car. So there's that feeling of the, the comfortability. And then now there's the present, what's happening now, and then now there's the future. So most people are stuck in the past and the present. No one actually usually looks at the future. So for Tuco, and I've seen this done so well because we have um, our headquarters, uh, Tuco's headquarters are in Ukraine. So we have like a team, a research and development team, who their work is just... Are they actually right there in Ukraine or they they are somewhere else right now? They are in Ukraine. Okay, I know the way is going on, but there are areas where... Exactly. The war is not is not is not is not so bad. Yes, in some areas. So we actually have a team that do does that. R and D. Their work is to research, come up with new ideas. They're identifying what's happening, what's changing. Again, we work very closely with uh, Google and Facebook. These digital companies. Uh, it's a tech company, so they are very ahead in terms of researching and innovating ways. So by the time we are figuring things out, these other media houses, they are still you know. And I don't know. I don't want to talk for them. I don't know what's happening there. Well, well, you, we, we must talk for them. So <laughs> no, <laughs> we must we must talk and, and and theorize what what is going on. Yeah, what is going on there? I think. So for I was me, I, I was, I was, I was actually coming to that yeah. to take. Yes, because tech. I think that is where the secret lies. And uh, I I imagine that 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 Tuko is is tech is tech fast. Yeah, yeah. you know. You 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 deeply understand how Google algorithm works. You deeply understand yes. how the how the robots work, how the how the internet is crawled, and how this information is put in the in the mm-hmm. Google database, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, and 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 basically you know listening tools. How you listen to your to the to the, to the team, audience to the audience, yeah. and then Feedback. and then find out what is what is selling, what they want to listen to, what they want to read, and things like that. And even the way you are, your pages scroll infinitely, mm-hmm. like you mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. just go and you can mm-hmm. read mm-hmm. for thirty two days. <laughs> Yes, which tech. Is, which That's is, the advantage. Which it just is, keeps which going. Is, which, is, good. which is really, which is really, really, really magical. So, in even when you when you say that uh, these guys are stuck in the past, they don't want to uh, to look at this. Don't you think then that there are secrets that that the traditional media is is grappling with? I mean, or do you think that just a matter of looking for these techies? Um, what I, what I know. With the disruption, it has actually brought about opportunities for roles that never existed. Yeah. Like before, you didn't actually need a tech person in a newsroom. Why? It was not necessary. But right now, you have to hire someone tech to actually come and tell you this is how this is working. We should try this. We should do this. And I think they're doing it. Maybe uh, maybe just maybe the, the, the pace. Or they also have their own different... Um, ideas and different plans you know and different to, kpis yes that's the thing <laughs> as we have our own different kpis i have my own different kpis which are revealed by the way every three months yeah. so i have to be on my toes these guys they also have their own kpis and they have their own targets so we we, ca- we don't really know what what they are aiming for but maybe whatever they're doing is working for them maybe mm. their focus is not to be like to go or to Grow digitally like Tuko. Maybe their mm. focus is something else. Probably, probably one of the things that that that, that is this is accusatory. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, people are accusing these digital platforms of uh, of one clickbaiting people yeah that has been said before yeah but i uh, just to make it clear for tuko from yes. where i i, I stand Be, because you work very closely with google you cannot make money from articles that you have clickbaited like they are very strict policies i know i know i know i know facebook yes i know facebook is very but but i find facebook just just careful with clickbaiting when yeah, you yeah, are yeah. sponsoring the posts but okay. when you're just having the, the raw numbers mm-hmm. like you guys mm-hmm. have then they're letting it pass i mean now what what I, what i can tell you for free is because because of our numbers we are facebook like has a very different it 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 gives us a very different eye it looks at us very differently there are things we just favorably can't, not favorably actually they are very strict because of that because of the numbers so there are people who have less numbers and they can post anything you can even see these other media houses for us we can't write stories like on crime hate rap because either your your page can be brought down you can be demonetized because of that like there are very strict policies that you have to follow because of monetization so for other companies uh media companies that are not monetizing on facebook for them anything goes but, and it's the but, same with but, but gossip 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 goes that's what i'm saying anything goes anything but goes. for you guys gossip goes for us we do yeah we do we do write a lot of entertainment stories actually not a lot mm-hmm. we have several desks it's just because entertainment sells so chances of you meeting with an entertainment story are very high as opposed to you meeting with an interview of a business a ceo that you've interviewed somewhere but we do have different desks we have a business desk current affairs desk political desk um entertainment desk human interest desk sports desk but just because it's synonymous with entertainment story so chances are you're going to meet that story because they go viral a lot compared to this other type of content that we publish mm. yeah. so but there is nothing wrong with the clickbaiting people no no it's very wrong as i said we do not click what, what, what is what is wrong with clickbaiting people what is wrong with, pe- with clickbaiting because you're promising people something that you don't have yeah yeah that is the wrong that is what what's wrong but can you can 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 you write a story can you write a story because because i think i think clickbaiting is should be divided into two maybe you're getting Number the word one, wrong it's not clickbaiting it's catchy you need a catchy hair ah. something that's going to make me want to click that is the thing not boring print so, headlines so so catchy. a catchy so a catchy headline is very different it's not it's not a it's not clickbait headline. it's not it's not clickbait clickbait but if we go to the traditional if mean, we go to the traditional meaning of clickbaiting mm-hmm. you're basically baiting them to click and whether okay. you are well, you can give it any name you want whether it's catchy or not but basically you are catching them you're trying to catch them and that's okay Yeah. my understanding of clickbait at deadline is you're telling people this is what's in the story and then you click on the story you don't find it yes, yes that's yes, my yes. V- that is ex- that is that is that i think that's my understanding yeah, of clickbait yeah. and that's what's and, and not that is that is that's that is, that is how generally it is no it is it, it it's, it's known. known yeah it's known and yeah. that's what i'm saying that's what we you can't do it's not it's it's we actually have a team like people who uh, head of departments who have to approve headlines as they go Yeah. as they are suggested headlines you know, on your signing stories so you just can't let any headline go just because so we have very strict rules in terms of clickbait we actually do not mm. yeah but there is there, there are lots of people that are that are the, you said entertainment uh, sells of course entertainment sells <laughs> you you do you, do you, you say entertainment is gossip no no it's not gossip i think gossip is just a word that people like using just to motione you know like they use it to generalize but mm-hmm. entertainment is so wide entertainment is so wide i can interview a celebrity that's entertainment it's not gossip yeah yeah it's the story i could you could be interviewing me here right now as a celebrity yeah is this gossip no it's not exactly it is entertainment mm. so it's just this generalization of stories that are are, are light mm. let me use the word light stories mm. the generality of people it. say people say go to go to emotion <laughs> that's the thing that's what i'm saying it's this is this mentality yeah. is this word of motion like they know things the thing with tuko is we are very good in in how we monitor monitor is how we get stories resource for stories yeah so there are high chances anything that's trending anything you see tuko probably has it because of how we we, we source for our stories how you crawl uh how we crawl okay don't use the word crawl. <laughs> we just have a very there's there are training training specific training that we, our team has been taken through on how to source for stories 
and mm. how you cannot. So chances are you, you can't find a big story out there that's not mm. on Tuko. So that's where this mentality of emotion because kitu yote inatendeka huko nje, Tuko probably has it. So that is the that mentality. Yeah. yeah. But it's not about gossip. Tuko 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 for for purpose of argument there's a lot of gossip stories going on or, mm-hmm. or what you'd call entertainment stories. But I I have a feeling mm-hmm. that Tuko is also so much into green content. It's not a feeling, it's the truth. That's what I'm saying. We we as I said we have a de- we have several departments. So it's just because There's a department for green content. Yeah, we actually call it evergreen. Evergreen, evergreen content. Evergreen content. Content yeah. that you can I can read today, I can read it next year, I can read it two years from now and yeah. it will still make sense. Timeless content. Timeless content. Yes. So we do have like there are people who they are, that's their work they are assigned to handle such stories. Mm. Because of the uh the depth people are going to read these stories longer they'll read to the end of its story you know of course that's good for business yeah. chances of clicking an advert are high so we actually they actually encourage to do evergreen content so we do have short stories we do have long stories mm. and like for evergreen content I'll give you example of we call them listicles we do a lot of lists about mm. this and that about a person about business about yeah so that fits in that in that category mm. yeah So Tuko 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 has this thing called there is Tuko I see Tuko Tuko Queen it's a Facebook page just why why do you why do you call it <laughs> What so it's it's just like um different brands like we do have um a Tuko main page just like the main yeah. Tuko Facebook page mm. and I think you've mentioned something about tech we've figured out how to engage with our audience So we actually have a team who their work is just to talk to the audiences to respond to comments on our on our page to engage them like that's a KPI that's mm. yeah so that's how we are able to get feedback that's how we are able to get these stories that people are always the, wondering the queen the queen page is not a, is not is not is not targeting women no no i was i was getting there yeah. so we have a tuko main page there that is just all the key stories go there then we have tuko breaking that specifically for current affairs stories political stories breaking news and then now we have Tuko Queen Tuko Queen is is specifically it's it's targeting women so stories about women stories that uh, topics about health topics about fashion yeah what you're saying gossip entertainment goes on on that particular page on, Tuko on, Queen on 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 queen yeah. um, so but How does the government look at Tuko because because honestly Tuko is big and um when you hear politicians talk mm-hmm. they hardly mention they have they have a big problem with this with these big media houses mm-hmm. I don't know whether because they are uh, they are they are bringing like for example citizen was at, at you know the, the 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 ruling the ruling the ruling the, the ruling class had a problem with citizen because of politics because of politics, politics. Yeah. but you're also into politics uh, how do you manage to to dodge this bullet if over and over again is it because that you are afraid to say things you're afraid to have <laughs> town hall meetings where people are talking politics um, are you guys are just like okay for us we don't want to get into this hard core politics we just want to stay you know around entertainment and and not influence because i'm thinking tuku can influence elections we actually do politics as i said we do entertainment is just a small it's a fraction <laughs> Of, when, of when, Tuko. when when did you write when did you write this, when last did you write a story that the government was like we have a problem oh i have gotten calls i just can't talk about it but yeah. i have gotten calls about stories about stories that are favoring a certain candidate during the previous elections yeah maybe it's just because the spotlight is not so much on us because you know it's a sort of alternative media it's not the mainstream but yeah we do have we do have situations but i imagine i imagine that if you are in a very in a very techy government like the united states or uk or yeah, or yeah. rwanda of course people, they, will they, they will know they will know they will, they will know how influential you, uh, influential you are mm-hmm. do you think that the government of kenya knows how influential you are or they still think that it is the ya ya ko ya ko this the, the mitra <laughs> is there <laughs> I think they do. We actually have uh, But do they ha- do they do, like they, do have they have the raw numbers? Do you think the government knows the raw number, the raw numbers of how how big Tuko is? 
I can't t- I can't really I can't tell in terms of that. But what I know is that we have like we we have like um like advert we actually engage in business with the government so they are aware i'm just not sure about the whatever you're hinting at i'm not <laughs> i'm not sure about that <laughs> but as i've said there are stories we've done that yeah we've gotten calls for for doing such stories mm. yeah you are a woman mm-hmm. and you are i i saw a, i saw a picture of you mm-hmm. being among um, uh, among boys the other mm. day at the media oh world. at the media council of kenya during yeah. the world press freedom day yes yes and i think you are you are the only one yes i was the only one <laughs> among us how many men i think there were seven there were seven right yeah and and that is that is that is interesting don't you don't you think so and and so the question is mm-hmm. why do you think women are not are not are not uh, are not leading mm-hmm. media houses and is it is it a male world mm-hmm. that's a tricky one what i know actually they do there are women like for that particular panel since i was part of uh you know when, you're, when they're doing the invitation they, they chose you because you're the managing director at, at tuko. tuko yes but there are there, are, there are also other women they just didn't they just didn't Which, show up how many women do you know that are, that that come close to the to the to the title <laughs> you have in this country <laughs> No, no, I'm no, I'm, 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 I'm being, I'm being really, really honest because in media, yeah, I'm not sure about MD, but I know the ones who are leading. For example, at Nation, we have Pamela Sitoni. Yeah, who is she's who the is group? Like which which position? She's the group. Uh, is it the group managing editor? Yeah, yeah, like she's the top, top, top in terms of editorial. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's one. I think that's that, that's one of the highest. The rest that I know are mostly managing editors, which was my previous role. So I knew several of them. Mm. One at Citizen, uh, one at Standard. Of course, majority are are I agree, majority are men. So we don't have a lot of women. Even myself, when I became managing editor, it was a struggle, especially because these are digital media. You don't have anyone who's done this before. Everyone else is a tradition on the traditional media side, mm. so it was a challenge. And then they're also older, so people in their thirties who are heading uh, media houses, of course, yeah. We I, I don't know if they're we have and and, and, and 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 how how do you do you, do you, do, you, do you do you talk about how big is how many employees are at Tuko? Oh yeah, I can. Hmm. I can oh you, okay you want me to talk about it? Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm asking you that so that I have a follow-up question on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tuko is of course it's big, but it's not I can't say it's big like these other media houses. Yeah. Like but right now we have I think around I can say it should be 70. 70 employees. 70 employees. Yeah. And how about how about how about writers that are not considered employees? Uh correspondents maybe around 20, the ones who we are working with very uh, mm. Like in t- on time, a re- on a regular basis. So about so about a hundred, a hundred employees right now. They could cool get there. Yeah, they could cool get there. Mm. The future, the future of digital natives. Where where is where is the war going to be? Where is the where are we going to have? I mean, there are people who are there are people who are. Are you scared of the people that are coming up? Scared? Oh, wow, I don't use the word scared. Scared. I think maybe just be prepared. I mm. think we are prepared. You like you have to. You always have to uh, identify what's what's coming and to align yourself with that. Let me use and, that. And then Tuko is confident that that nothing is going to get them unawares. Oh, I don't think anything has ever gotten us unawares mm. in terms of uh, digital. Mm. In terms of that, that's I don't think so. I know you have a sister, a sister in Ghana. Called? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so Tuko is on is um, under a bigger, a larger company, an IT company in Europe. But so Tuko is like is under the media side of this uh, this company, and they have several companies in Africa. They have we have there's a Tuko like uh, media company in Ghana, in Nigeria. The one in the one South called Africa. Legit is in Nigeria. Is in Nigeria. And That's Ghana, actually bigger, way bigger than Tuko. It has it's it's it has a lot of employees. It's way bigger. I I, I saw that it is the number two in Nigeria, or has it yes. taken number two, number one spot? Um. Okay, I'm not sure, <laughs> but I know it's one of the leading. And then and then sure. the one in Ghana is called Yen. It's called Yen. 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 
Y-E-N. Ah, yen. Yen. I, I imagine that is a Ghanaian language. Or? Yes, it's Ghana. It's Ghana. It's Ghanaian. Okay. And then and we have briefly in South Africa. Briefly in South Africa. Yeah. And I imagine you are trying to conquer the continent. Oh yeah. And right now we have um there's a new product. It's called Sports Brief. That is that is the it's one that, that is that is the one that I'm interested in. Yes, it's I am, focusing I am with, on sports. But do you have a podcast for sports? Uh, Maybe I should come and start it there. <laughs> we could talk. I am I am I, I am I am I am my Facebook. I don't know if you follow me on Facebook. Yeah, I yeah, I do. Always I do. talking about sports and I'm you're passionate about it. Oh man, I I don't I don't drink alcohol a lot. Oh, so that's the only okay. okay. Yeah, I got so you. so I got probably you. probably Oh yeah. So so thank you very much for coming. Um uh, I think I think shout out to you. Mm-hmm. We're wishing you the best. Thank you for the confidence. You know, and uh, and and we are we are we are hoping that Tuko is going to be bigger and bigger, and we are hoping that other African Afri- other African African digital natives can come up and and catch up with Tuko because that's what we need, right? Of course, we are moving. We are we are moving towards something better. As a, of course, as a world, we are we are always we have this trajectory where we are headed. Mm. Yeah. So I think it can only get better yeah. and better. Do you did you did you foresee you yourself becoming this? Uh, Honestly, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Are you getting shock every day? Uh, the the shock the shock has went off now. I mean, the work it's a lot. It's very it the was, work is a lot. Yeah, it was very daunting. The mm. work is a lot. The KPIs, yeah, the KPIs are quite uh, quite Crazy. quite high. Yeah, quite high. But yeah, I'm I'm slowly getting okay. getting the hang of it. Great, yeah. great. Thank you very much, Julia. I I keep I I know you as Irene. Yes. You know, Thank you for inviting me. Julia is a me. beautiful name. Is it is it what what for? Is it English? No, it yes, sounds. Yes, it's, Eng- it's English. Julia. Yes. Ajali. Yeah. Irene. Thank you very Irene much. is my home name. Mm. <laughs> my ID name. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in to this show, uh, Money Monkey Africa. I've been talking to. Irene, who is doing very well in the digital uh, native world, and so I would, I would, I would like you to, I would ask you to subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel. The moment you subscribe, we get likes. Google thinks that we are doing something amazing, and we'll, you know, second, uh, second this video to others. Uh, tap on that notification bell, you know, and so that you know that another video is coming and you'll be notified. Thank you very much. Until another video, bye for now.